From a sculptor with a fetish for steel, we find a visual artist who has carved his niche and style from experimental art in Kampala. He likes to venture into the unknown with his creations and his stunning pieces are a testimony of his unbound imagination. I'm driven by like what if I did this, um, what would happen to this and so to me I think I take more time in the process, not the final piece. My name is Ahindusi Boronex and uh, I'm a visual artist. I well, my artworks I sign as Ron. After graduating from Makero University, Margaret Trowell School of Industry and Fine Arts, Ahimbasiwi started as a sculptor who has grown into a versatile visual artist with range and depth that comes with his unique experimental approach to art. My journey involves studio research. Because sometimes I always say it's the artist that enjoys the artwork because it's the artist that enjoys the process. The final piece is just like, uh, to me, like a, a bit, but like uh, the layers and layers of things you don't see that makes, makes like, see what you're seeing. So to those, those, like, mistakes you make, those are things people will never see that make the art piece. I'm trying out with neon lights. Uh, neon colors, uh, so the work is supposed to be seen under uh, the fluorescent light. The idea is just start with something, then the idea keeps on growing. Then later I start doing something um, for which someone can relate to. Much as he likes the thrill of adventure and experiments, the soul of his pieces still embrace the spirit of sculpture. I started mainly as a sculptor. If you look closely to most of my work, they have the relief, the 2D effect to it. They are like uh, painted sculptures, which is a combination of sculpture painting and printmaking, where like some works are like just, it's just an illusion. You think it's metal when it's just painted. Ahimbisiwe loves to etch and weave subliminal messages in these illusions. He believes an art piece should be provocative and open to interpretation. People ask me about the message of the works. I think it should be not too obvious. To me, it's like having an opinion, a visual opinion, of which the artwork should start a conversation, not where like, the artist has to be the one asking the questions then answering the questions. I find that too boring and then uh, I think a conversation is not like the other person answering questions, but where like an art piece leads you into something or provokes something, then you start up a conversation. I like tapping from the power of the subconscious, um, because there are things we know, but we don't know that we know. Sometimes you say something and you wonder where it came from, something too brilliant and you feel proud of yourself. So I was wondering how do you tap from that? It could be something partly part of you. I heard people say your works are too dark. I wanted also to always see beauty and ugliness. I like contradictions in my work. Where like we have sophistication and then naivety, ugliness, beauty, then order in chaos. For 16 years, Ahimbisiwe's art has grown rapidly in both size and quality. This demands for more space. He has turned his home into a workshop and gallery where he creates, exhibits and sells his work. The art business in Uganda is not an easy venture. You have to be thick-skinned. For us, you're in the extreme. You're most going to the unknown. And some people, I think, find comfort in the known. Majority of people. Because you start, um, you never know when you're making a sale and uh, of course you have to make certain sacrifices. I'm 13 and I'm not married. Yeah, that's a sacrifice you have to make because either you choose. To me there are things you can postpone. But for artists it's never easy, it's especially when you're living in a third world country. Because I found like what we would call art as in Uganda,
traditionally where you use baskets and because it has to have an aesthetic value. I think we need to respect that as, as Ugandan artists. Because when I started doing bags, Ugandans still become more appreciative. So like the, there's introducing art slowly to the public because it's not the basic need. Despite the setbacks associated with the visual arts in Uganda, Ahimbisiwi's resolve has never faltered. He has stayed resolute in ensuring his craft breaks through the international markets. The internet has been his greatest ally. Now, the entire world is on his fingertips. Earlier in the 90s, like Gary has had too much monopoly. So he had to go through them. I think with the introduction of the internet, um, I think artists became more freer. You can have your own followers, you can create what, because you have a gallery of your own, it may be online, but you have a gallery of which you can control. You show the world what you want to show them. Okay, this is how my Instagram uh, page looks like. You will only find my artworks. You won't find my face or anything. Because um, I only use social media to show what I do. Uh, partly, um, I have over like uh, 123 artworks here. Some are political, some are about relationships, um, um, some are about daily life, some are about struggles. Um, so there's also a link to my website, which is called pixels.com. A good thing with my website, you can find also products there. I did open up a page called Art Uganda. Instead of, because um, I think it's better when you try to even promote yourself, you promote others. Because I, I prefer when you say, if I say I'm a Ugandan artist, I can't call say myself a Ugandan artist alone. Yeah, it's better as a group. So I thought that could be something you could share with fellow artists, but also use it as um, an archive, which I share for free, and someone who wants it gets it for free. He hasn't stopped there. Ahimbisiwe has joined hands with other like-minded artists to bring art closer to the public as a way of breaking stereotypes associated with art in Uganda and also promote the appreciation of visual arts among the locals. There's a group of artists who started uh, the first uh, street art festival, which is called Lava Festival. It's now running like in its 10th year now. Lava was trying mainly to find alternative art spaces. I think we only have one gallery. That's the Makere Art Gallery that was built to be a gallery. Others are houses turned into galleries. The first one we did was called Pot in the Hall. We used like the, the pot holes as a mold. Then, <laughs> then afterwards we would paint the mold. The good thing after the first week they came and filled the whole pot hole, so maybe it helped. So, so it came up with different, we'd come up with different themes. That would be a different way of also exposing our art to the public. Because not everyone goes to galleries, some people fear going to galleries. For a man who has rubbed shoulders with the world because of his art, Ronex Ahimbasiwe wants to keep painting pictures that will blaze the trail for new generations of artists. He will keep honing his craft to ensure Ugandan heritage is celebrated in international galleries and exhibitions while adding a little more colour in Ugandan walls. The future is always determined by today or what you did yesterday. So mine, I'm collecting things like uh, what I would prefer calling like uh, cultural values from each culture. So those would be like a cultural, more of like a cultural museum or culture center. Then mixed with our creations. I'm collecting this so that it becomes source of my inspiration for my next works. And if you're looking for inspiration? I always tell people if it's possible, don't get a job. I think find a career. When you have a job, it's if you look at when is five coming, it's like there's two. <laughs> but like, I think when you're doing what you're passionate about, there's never enough time. And it's more fun, you're looking for tomorrow, like that. Tomorrow you sit down, when is weekend coming, when is Monday. <laughs> it's like punishment to some people, you know, like, uh, yeah, you make the money, but you never find... I think you live a simple, like when you follow your passion, it will be simpler, but more 
I think it's fulfilling.